Welcome to the latest episode of Platform Podcast. Today's guest is Cody Sanders. Oh my god, Heath just ate so much shit. <laughs> Cody Sanders is from Austin, Texas, which has a brilliant history in rollerblading, which has been documented all the way up until recent times by Aunt Medina. In fact, his most recent two videos were Candy and Ends, which were also awesome. Cody actually had a section in one of Ant's videos, Dag Days, and he was flow for USD for a while, but most people will probably be familiar with Cody because of Jumbo. Howdy, welcome back to Jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbo is a phenomenal video series that Cody created along with the rest of the crew in Austin, and it just documents their weekend trips, going out on sessions, going on missions, finding street spots, some of them good, some of them not, and just the kind of camaraderie and laughter and banter that they have throughout the day. And I think what makes it most appealing to people is just you get a really good insight into the personalities. They've got great skaters there like Zach Gutweiler, Andrew Broom, John Sullivan shows up from Dallas from time to time. Then you've got these hilarious interactions between people like Heath Burley and Caleb Benavides. You've got people like Michael Kraft showing up and just doing the weird and wonderful and things that you didn't think were possible on skates. And it's just this really good mix of great skating, really entertaining banter, really funny, and just the kind of thing that makes you pumped and makes you want to go out skating with your friends. I've actually interviewed Cody once before. I interviewed him years ago. I think it was for either the print magazine or the website, but it was definitely over 10 years ago. He was just moving to California at the time, or had just moved, and he was being a bit sketchy about his job at the time. Don't know what he's doing these days. So this will be kind of a catch-up of sorts. I know he's coming to Winter Clash, so we're going to see him there. I know Jumbo are planning on filming at Winter Clash, and they're going to Barcelona afterwards. So loads to talk about. What to talk about the series want to talk about their plans this year. They've kind of expanded into making products and stuff like that. So it seems like things are getting bigger and they've got a bit of a following going now. So yeah, lots to talk about. Before that though, I want to give a giant shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are listed on the screen now. If you want to join the Wheelsteam Patreon, you can do so for as little as £3 a month. There's loads of videos, behind the scenes stuff, photos, industry gossip, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, follow if you want that stuff. If not, click the subscribe button. Every little helps. That's enough of that sickening spiel though. Cue the music. Am I here? You caught me. You caught me mid, mid sip. Can you hear me? Of course, I can hear you loud and okay. Clear. Cool. You can hear those dulcet, dulcet Texas tones. <laughs> um, how you doing? Hey, are, are is it going, going, or is this like an initial hello? Like, I mean, we there's no there's no warm up. There's no prep because I'm, oh. I'm, ho I'm hoping you're going to say something foolish or incriminating, and then I can use oh. that. That's no, 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 no. Oh. No, this is then then hello hello everyone we're here like <laughs> we made it <laughs> yeah. um i was trying to remember so we've obviously done an interview before but i can't remember how long ago it was it was was it for the print mag or was it for the website the uh, website it, it um, was like it was like 10 years ago or something wasn't it yeah, I'm not i'm not good or legit enough to be published in print so it's always on the web whether yeah. it's a website or a podcast, and that's it. <laughs> that was sick. I'm kidding. So Aunt Medina's got that on you because he wasn't. He managed to get several pages in the print issue, and you just you just get the web. So that I know. He posted that the other day, and I, I I took it as a subtle jab. As as you should, as I'm you kidding. should. Um, I'm yeah, yeah. So I already put that up, and I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that when I just got myself in a stupid amount of debt. Yeah, yeah, rem remember it well. So we're on the we're on the famous we're on the famous Jumbo Awards couch. Yeah, I I I you know it's I broke it in the other day and I was like I'll just use it again. Okay, okay. I've got a tiny house. There's not a lot of options here, so. <laughs> 
I've got um got a bone to pick with you about those awards, oh. actually. Um okay. poor uh poor Zach. Poor Zach Gutweiler um slagging off his sailor cap. I didn't slag him off. I, I gave him the win. That was the winning one. I feel like, I feel like that was a there, there's a double edged sword with that. I feel like you were you you were you were criticizing his his wild fashion choices. But, I gave him the win. I gave him the loss too separately, but he got a win. I evened it out. They can't be mad at me. They're still at zero. Okay. One win, one loss. Right. That's even. So you're you're playing safe. You um there's there's footage of you floating around in a, in a, in a, captain's, a, cap, hat. In a captain's hat yeah right and, and i look like a douchebag when when we do the pre-recorded version of this and i edit it later i'm putting that clip in so people can see you in the captain's cap <laughs> I don't oh man <laughs> doing a one-footed wall smack how embarrassing times were different then okay okay <laughs> You didn't have to wall ride with both feet a long time ago. Right. Okay. You could jump off. You could also jump off the rail five feet early before it ends and land on the wrong side of it. And it was fine. So don't judge me. Those were, you know, it, it was of the time. There was, for all the people saying, oh, rollerblading was so much better than in the early 2000s. Oh, was, oh that real men rollerbladed back then. It was like, yeah, there was also a lot of. There's also a lot of questionable landings that you wouldn't get away with today. Like if if you landed on the same on the different side to you jumping on, people would be like, "Lava, no, go again." What's that? No, that's that's not a top soul. Let's let's go, let's go. We'll probably be saying that ten years from now. Oh yeah, About guaranteed. Then. Guaranteed. Like, oh, man, I can't believe we used to do podcast over Zoom. What were we thinking? <laughs> I mean, I've said it before. I'll say it again. There's just, there's not enough just grown men just talking on the internet. There's, there's, there's not enough. We need. I agree. We need, we need more. It's a, it's a neglected market. Um, and <laughs> in our case, I actually do agree. I think we need more like culture and variety and things like this, not just Instagram reels. So good job. You're one of like five, and that's not a lot. So there's as, there's as many as five. Yeah, right. But but a lot of them come and go quickly. It's like wheel companies. They they're here for a couple of years and they they go. Same with podcasts and almost all content creators. They're here real quick and they're gone real quick. This is this is true. Actually, that that reminds me of another point. So Ant Ant mentioned about you coming on last year, and I think it was like near the start of the year or something. And I was like, let's just let's just hold off. And I was like, why? And I was like, well, first off, it kind of weirds me out when it's two YouTube guys speaking in a podcast. It just feels like a bit of a kind of why. But there's something very um, feels like a bit of like a circle jerk or something. I don't know. It's Am I bit, a YouTube guy now? I mean, you're not not a YouTube guy. Oh, well, I, everyone in that regard is a YouTube guy because it's literally the only place to put your stuff that's not social media. True, but as in, I just mean as in, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of difficult to explain. Also, I wasn't entirely sure you were going to see it through a jumbo. I had my doubts. That's fair. Because uh, I quit everything I've ever started. You have. And I remember, because I remember when you started a full length video that never saw the light of day. And I was it was like, a half length. It was a half length. It was a half length. I made a half length. Thank you very much. What did it end up? Have I just erased this from my memory? It was like a thirteen minute long edit of me and Fugi and Heath going across the nation and, and just filming random people, and then I made a big long thing. Right. Um, okay. What was it called? Cool. I don't know. <laughs> 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 and that's not a joke answer. I really did forget what I called it. It was just some dumb name. It was like a flash in the pan and also nobody cared. So but it was it was meant to be a full length video with like sections and stuff. So what ended up happening was I did make sections, but I made sections by city. Right. So I had like El Paso, Austin, uh Richmond even had a mention um San Diego. And Heath was supposed to have a full section. Heath did have a full section, but since it was like, 
he basically wanted it like separate from the video. So it wasn't in the video. There was a Heath section that dropped and okay. then there was just a half length. Right. Right. Half which, length which, video. which now 10 years later, the half length of that time would be considered a full length of this time. I was about to say, now you drop a 15 minute, you drop a 15 minute thing or the Kelsos drop a 15 minute thing and they're getting full length of the year. So mm -hmm. That's... 2030 full length video is just going to be a freaking edit like a three minute part yeah and no, if we have the attention span then to watch three minutes non-stop unbridled skating oh, yeah. <laughs> incredible in 2030 yeah you're like i need to wait i need to watch this until the song finishes i'm what, i'm what? actually kidding when i say that a little bit i think I think there is a market in skating for super long form because that's what I'm doing. I don't think it's a huge market, but I also don't think we have a huge one to begin with. But I do think like, I mean, me especially, dude, if I'm bopping around the house and no one's home, I'm going to put in my AirPods and listen to some long winded dissection of something on YouTube while I do stuff around the house. So... I think that that with skating would work too. Plus, everything everything's a reaction to what came before it. So if we do get to the point where it's just Instagram, Instagram, like one clip, like God, sometimes sometimes I don't even notice when someone's if someone posts a clip on Instagram and a friend will say later during the week, "Oh, did you see this that that person did?" and I'm like, "No," and they're like, "Oh, it was the next clip," and I'm like, "Oh, I didn't." Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't go that far. I didn't watch past the first clip. <laughs> I think that it's good. I think that I'm not hating on it. I, I recently watched the Todd McInerney uh, Jump Street thing, and he was hating hard on on Instagram. And I get it. You know, I totally get it. But I will say, without it, I wouldn't know some stuff existed. Also, without it, where would I put my skate park clips? <laughs> there's no, there's true. nowhere for them yeah. to go. <laughs> They have He's, to go somewhere. Yeah. He does. Um, he does have a point. Instagram cannot capture the magic or the feeling or the the kind of buzz that you get from a skate video. But a skate video also can't do what Instagram can do, and that's reach millions. And that's of not people. the problem. That's not the problem of Instagram. It's the problem of us. It's the problem of rollerblading as a whole. So you know, let's go, boys. Let's make some. Let's make some long ones and put them on YouTube. And that's it. Just actually only on YouTube. There's no other place to go. I mean, that's, yeah. Pretty much. We Vimeo. tried Vimeo. <laughs> well, hey, Vimeo, Vimeo <laughs> screwed it from, Vimeo screwed it for itself, right? Yeah. They made it too weird. They made it too hard. The search function does not work. It's gone. And, and now they're just deleting people's videos. Like, yeah, they, Vimeo destroyed itself. I know. Oh, I know. Half of all my stuff is now gone. So um, thanks, Vimeo. But I do, <laughs> yeah. I, th I think we'll see a return to like longer form videos. I think people will eventually get fed up and go, well, "No, this isn't. I want, I want the feeling of, of yeah, what it feels like to watch multiple sections or a tour video or so, yeah, whatever." Mm -hmm. And what did you? What were your thoughts on Brain God? Brain God's the the controversial topic at the moment. That I mean, it's still people are still dragging on talking about it now, going e like either way, and people are very like very one way or the other about it there's not that many people like down the middle just going yeah you know what yeah i feel like i feel like you're giving a diplomatic answer I'm to kidding. not get yourself into trouble you you set me up for it i love everything nemo does nemo can do no wrong and every time i watch one of his like videos i'm there's usually something about it that i'm like how did he do that whether it's him skating or whether it's how he's made the thing. And this one, I mean, yeah, it's definitely different, but they're always different. They're always kooky. They're always way ahead of their time. And I was watching this one just overwhelmed by the production of it. I have no clue how he's making a lot of his stuff look that way. And I got nothing but good to say about Nemo all the time. Yeah, the, the film and Ned and then it was insane. It was like... It it was like the kind of thing you would expect to see on like MTV Two in the late nineties. It was just, yeah, it was so bizarre, and that that aspect of it I really liked. 
the skating not so much but the the film in Nedden was film in Nedden was the skating at some points was downright upsetting to watch but yeah um soil in particular that was that was a tough two minutes three minutes Jesus Christ um <laughs> you know hey um, I'm no, no, you're being diplomatic. No, like... <laughs> no, I've scared you. You're like, I might bump into these people. No, 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 no. I don't mind. I mean, like, everybody's skating is garbage. Everybody. I don't care who you are. We'll find a way to hate on you. Um, you're allowed to say that because you hide behind a camera these days, so you can't get the shots fired at you. You just you stick your head up from the, the, the pulpit only every once in a while. Well, that's true. Um Regardless, yeah, everyone can find a way to be hated on. And uh, I'm sure I can watch that video and go, oh, whack, oh, trash, oh, he didn't do the this and that. But those guys are always kind of like pushing into the realm of of what counts. And is it kind of funny if he does it like this? And and oftentimes, yes, it is kind of funny. And that's why I love uh, those videos. And Brain God's hilarious. Everything about – it's getting – it's getting way, way left field. Like it's it's go, going so strange that it, it's I don't I don't even get some of the jokes anymore because I guess I'm old. Like get off my lawn, old. Uh, but it's I don't know. It's funny, and if yeah. I don't like it, I'll, I'll just skip through it. So the parts I didn't like, I don't remember because I probably didn't watch much of it. Uh, yeah. But I did watch the whole video ish. Everybody skips a little bit. People are probably skipping through this thing too. I, I watched it beginning to end, and it, it oh. was it was it wasn't easy at times. Definitely wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have you have to commentate. Part of your platform is reviewing and commentating on stuff. So, and you probably also like it when you watch something and you're upset at it. You're probably like, "Ooh, I hate this. Mm, I can't I wait to it. talk about this." See, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call it upset. I would call as as a big Andrew Nemirovsky fan. I think the thing that I think the thing that I found really confusing about it is that he holds his own skating to such a high standard. Yet, in certain sections in that video, it feels like he doesn't really hold other people's skating. Like, as in, there's certain tricks where I'd be like, "Whoa, get back up there and do that again." That was what was that. Have there you ever a... asked? Have you ever asked him to come on here? No, I don't even know. Does he have? No, I suppose he's got a Beepus. That's an idea. That's a hilarious idea. I mean, he might be. I, I think Andrew might be too cool for platform. You're not too cool for platform. Yeah, but I think great. Andrew. <laughs> great. Yeah, you're right. I guess. Uh, I don't know. We're all we're all boys, so I'm happy to to chill with the boys. That's a good. I like I like that. I like that you're pitching ideas, though. I'll I'll you know what I'll ask him, and then yeah. Can, but who can knows if me. Get, who and, knows if you'll get Nemo or like a character? You know, like this is true. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. I don't really even know him that well, so I shouldn't be saying anything at all. A, a career in politics awaits you after this. You've you've mm -hmm. navigated this these shark infested waters quite well. Um, so the cat's out of the back. I didn't. I won't. I won't watch your awards video after I'd recorded the Winter Clash video and was like, "Oh crap! Cody's already told everyone they're going." I was like, "Oh well, I'm not announcing this at all. Crack on." Um, so a bunch of you guys are going to Winter Clash. You've got you, uh, Heath, Caleb. Michael Craft. I'm missing someone. Mick. Mick Casals. Yeah, the best one of us all. You forgot best. about the only good one. Uh, that's, <laughs> whoa, whoa. I'm kidding. No, no, Heath is going. Right. I'm, I mean, my favorite. Well, see, I, I, I want to talk about my jumbo favorites later. We'll go on to that later. But I've, I've got another contender. I've got some. I've I've got some favorites out of the jumbo the jumbo group. Okay, um, I'm excited to hear that. But, but yeah, Mick Casals, Mick Casals is definitely up there. Um, so yeah, when did you guys? When did you guys all decide you were going to make the Winter Clash trip, and why? Why decide? Because this is your first time going, right? I know that. I know that Kraft's been before because he said that he got sick and like during the trip and had a terrible time and couldn't skate the way he wanted. None of the other guys have been before, right? No. So what? Well, we're all just we've all been broke for a long time 
And, and for the record, we're still kind of broke. <laughs> I was about to say, you guys. Still, we're, we're pushing through and uh, and and eating eating ramen and 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 making it making it work, baby. Like we're gonna go whether okay. we like it or not. We decided on it like six months ago. We didn't pull the trigger on it till like two months ago, and it was real haphazard. It was just like, hey, uh, we all just got paid. Do you just want to do it? And we all irresponsibly said, yeah, like we'll just figure it out, and hung up the phone, slammed it on the receiver of our house phone and uh, bought tickets together and we are still going. Nobody backed out. Right. And you're going to Barcelona afterwards. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to Barcelona for? Um, so this is where it gets a little, little strange. We're all flying in and then we're doing winter clash and flying to Barcelona that Sunday, like the, the Sunday after winter clash, right? Some of the boys are only going to be there for like four, four or five days. Heath, Mick, Caleb, and uh, yeah, just Heath, Mick, and Caleb go back to Amsterdam. And they're going to go kick it in Amsterdam for two days with Kevin, who does plastic pushers. Okay. Um, Zach Gutweiler isn't going to Winter Clash, but he is flying into Barcelona. And he's going to be with me in Barcelona. So for that entire week, me... You know, all, all the boys till they leave, and then me, Zach, and Michael Kraft will be staying and, like, still filming for a couple more days. Right. So. Okay. That's confusing, right? Yeah. The government's kind of splitting up and doing their own thing and meeting up late, and it, it's it's been hell to plan, but we're doing it. Right. It'll be so interesting. Goal, oh, sorry. What were you going to say? No, that's fine. This is my goal, and I'm going to say it publicly, so I have to hold myself to it, because as you know, I quit easily. So my goal is I want to film every day of the trip how I film every week here. So every single day, I'm basically going to film a For the Streets episode in Barcelona, day one, two, three, four, whatever. That's going to suck, but I think I can do it. Now, I'm not going to drop them every single day because I'll blow my brains out if I work that much. But I'm going to keep all the footage. I'm going to drop the weekly episodes as I do. And I want to show us in Barcelona chilling as normal. The different goal I have is I want to film a skate video kind of in reverse to where I'm going to just drop all the footage in the For the Streets format, the long form docuseries format. After, in the middle of all that being done, though, I'm going to drop all the skate clips in like a classically edited style video, too. So it's like you're what you, you might have already have seen a lot of the tricks in the video prior, but you also will have seen the process and the trip and you might have emotional attachment to it. So I think even though some people would say you already spoiled the footage, quote unquote, I think it might resonate differently because you were already a part of that session you know, sort of like remotely and you'll know the hell that was gone through to get X clip. And I want to see if that works. That, yeah, that is quite an interesting concept. Lonnie Gallegos kind of did it before. Kind of, not not to that extent. Um, I think it was, was it feet four or feet three? There was one of them where he just kept showing on Instagram, the process of getting tricks, but the video yeah. hadn't came out yet. So people, he didn't show the final landed make, but he showed the process of doing the trick, like the particularly hard or like troubling ones for, I can't remember who's in the video, like Soderbergh or like other like LA guys, California guys. And I just remember being like, he's really given away a lot of the video. But then when you actually saw the video and you just saw the make, you're like, oh, but I actually got, how hard he worked for that so it did it yeah. did give you an appreciation for it so maybe and that's just social media which is like kind of in a way forgettable so it's really not blowing it at all if you post it on social media i think i think that long form youtube like you're part of that session like it, it might stick in the brain longer so this is really blowing it right. <laughs> this is blowing yeah, it true. to a high level yeah. Um, but again, it's like, it's like one of these things you experiment with different forms and could pay off, could work, could, yeah, could be something that other people latch onto and go, yeah, let's try that. I doubt it. 
Well, you never, you never it's know. A lot, it's a lot. It's a lot of effort, and it's a lot of effort for almost no money, and definitely not a lot of recognition or street cred or respect. So, I highly doubt anyone's gonna want to re replicate this awful process. But I we'll mean, see. You say that, but there's a crew in the UK <laughs> that have started making they've started making their own version of Jumble for the streets, and they even regularly reference you guys in their episodes. They've only got a few episodes done so far, but they're always like. You've hmm. seen this before. Morning brew. Uh, what's brewing? I think it's called. That's it. That's what it is. Yeah, Mark Duke Warner's. Nugent and those guys. Yeah, yeah, Mark Warner. That's not there. actually his name, but that's his name in my mind. Yeah, Billy Martin. Billy Martin. I find it really hard to sit. It really bothers me when people do that. Like, don't make it their Instagram thing. Like, rat fuck. Because I always like struggle to remember his real name. I or I'll straight up call people by their Instagram handles. <laughs> Like that's, and that's just how it's going to be. Like you have, you have to change your name to your actual name, or I'm not going to remember it if we don't talk all the time. What about if it's someone in, you do know in real life though? And they've got like a you, weird. You're, you're just wheel scene. True. But you've got. I'm like, you've, oh yeah. Wheel scenes here. You've got Heath who's tech. What's, what is it? Texas <laughs> state mental hospital or something. Yeah. He's just Texas state mental hospital. That's yeah. all he is. I'm kidding. Um, David. He's. I feel like I feel like Heath and Caleb might have a bit of a tough time with Kevin. Kevin's quite a hard line, straight edge guy, and those two guys are the polar opposite of that. Well, he'll be catching them at the the end of it, so maybe they'll be all sobered up and and ready to not be foolish. Will they? I'm legit a little nervous, by the way. Uh I I feel like I would love to be there to watch it all unfold. I feel like Heath and Caleb are the kind of guys that could get themselves into trouble in Europe. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they can. They get themselves into trouble here at home, and it happens often. And I'm nervous for – I'm really just actually nervous only for Mick because Mick's the only one that's full sober all the time. I can just forget that's and true. forget. Uh, but – you know, Mick, Mick will probably have to deal with it. Michael also doesn't handle antics well, I think, after like a day or two. Okay. We took, we took Michael with us to the carrier's comp and he was in the hotel room with me, Heath, and Caleb. Um, and we'd never, you know, like we've been friends forever, but like we've never just taken a full trip, like crashed in the same place together like that. And Michael's a nice, normal guy. Michael Kraft, to anyone listening, he's a nice, normal guy. You know, he has fun, but he knows when to stop having fun. He knows when to go to bed and be quiet and be nice. Um, the other people in the room don't always. And uh, it, it, it gets real childish and it gets it's really funny. It's really funny. But if you're not prepared for uh, being annoyed 24-7 and dealing with nonsense, it's hard to do in your 30s. Yeah. So, so do you think there's a do you think there's an there's an opportunity for conflict on this trip? Because that would I don't make, want there to be. I don't uh, want there to be. It would if make there for is, some I'm excellent still television. Film though. I'm still gonna film it. I'm still gonna post it, even if it sucks. Even if I hate you after the trip, I'm still gonna post it. Uh, so I don't we, want this to happen. Uh, I'm not willing this into existence. If my boys are listening to this, please be good. So oh, we can't. God. We can't take up a, a, a platform jumbo. We could set up a betting pool and and bet on who's going to get into either a, a verbal or a physical fight first. Obviously, not I'll not be, let them know ahead let me of know. time. I'll get you on the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have a word to some of the guys. Me and Ann will figure something out. We'll we'll set okay. up a we'll set up a, a booking system. People can anonymously <laughs> anonymously gamble on it. Um, Sounds good. We'll, we'll open it up online. We'll take PayPal payments. Yeah. Is gambling legal where you are? Um, in what sense? Can you gamble? I mean, you can go into like a betting shop and place a bet. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, betting shop is what they're called. That's interesting. Well, um, so or or we call them bookies. There. Okay. Cool. That's bookmakers. More, more familiar to me. Yeah. Um, from the middle of Texas, you know, we don't have a lot out here. It's all just horses and hay out there. But uh. Uh, okay. Surely, I was just surely they bet on professional sports. No, not in Texas. It's all illegal. And if you oh. are going to bet here, you have to like 
do it on your phone, maybe get a VPN to like tunnel your access out of the state to another state. Yeah, it's totally illegal in all of Texas. Is it Texas that has like the Indian reserves that people go on to go to casinos? Is that it's right? Uh, it's right above te Texas. Um, right. You have to go to Oklahoma, or you got to go to Louisiana. Okay, right. Yeah, right. So it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's good. so. That's yeah. why I guess that's why I said I know a guy. I said it like it was illegal over there too. I, I was like, oh yeah, that doesn't make oh, any no, sense. We've, yeah, I want yeah, to explain it. Yeah, we've we've got free reign. Um, Must be nice. Yeah, but I mean, I don't gamble, so it's of no interest. But yeah, this it's quite it's funny the things that like they outlaw, but yet make legal. Yeah, don't you dare, don't you dare talk politics on this podcast. I'm, 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 we're only I'm, twenty minutes in. I won't getting, do it. Not getting into it. <laughs> um, so let's talk about jumbo or jumbo. Um, yeah, I, love that. First off. Thank you for sticking with it because, like I said, yeah, I wasn't convinced when I was like, and come on, like we've we've been here before. I was like, when I spoke to him, he told me he was going out to California. He was out there for like five minutes, then came back. Um, when you had your secret five, agent job that you didn't tell five me about. months, thank you. <laughs> five minutes. Um, and then there was the full length video that we never got. And then, you know, so I was Happily. like, is he is he gonna stick this out? But it's I think is has grown a good following. I look forward to it when it's coming out. I've watched every single episode, um, and way yeah, yeah um, it, did, it did did stick around, didn't it? And you've even got merch and stuff now. Got I even got a message from someone today saying that he stumbled across Jumbo and bought a pair of rollerblades again because of Jumbo. He didn't mm -hmm. he didn't currently skate when he started watching the series. And watching you guys have such a great time, he's like, I miss this. I miss that experience. I want to do that again. That's that happened, that's, to, you, that happened to you in real life? No, as in, like, I put up, when I put up that video, but you guys, when someone oh, commented okay. underneath it going, they're the reason I bought a pair of rollerblades again. Oh, love that. So I've gotten a lot of those messages. There are comments, yeah. And then a lot of times I'll get like, like, a wall of text message and it's like from someone being like man i haven't done this in x amount of years thank y'all and i'm like hair's blown back and that's kind of why i haven't quit for i mean that's one of a thousand reasons but that's one of them when i meet people and they've either never skated before they've switched from another action sport which is real crazy um or uh yeah, just come back from a long time and it's special and that's cool. And uh shout out to that guy. I wish I knew his name. I'd, I'd shout him out, but yeah. Like st yeah, I think stuff like that's pretty awesome. Um who like so obviously Ant had made candy, then he made ends, and then there was kind of like Ant decided he wasn't making full lengths or just didn't want to for the time being, and then there was like a little bit of a gap, and then Jumbo started. Mm -hmm. Who's whose idea was Jumbo? Like I know the name is like Jumbo over it. That's where mm -hmm. that comes from. But like who? Yeah, where'd the name come from? And who was who pitched the concept to the group essentially? So the concept is how I've always like. Okay, there's a few things that go into this. The name comes from either Heath or Fugi, and how the name started is real stupid. Um, it's, it's them talking very redneck and saying, and, and we love simple tricks, like just jumping over something and, uh, like no grab, no spin, no, just jump over it. And, uh, whenever you say it real redneck, it turns into like, jump over it, jumbo. It, it just, it, instead of saying jump over it, we just started screaming jumbo, like, oh, he jumboed it, you know, like, and whenever Anthony decided to quit filming, uh, uh, parentheses, he didn't actually quit. He's still filming, end parentheses. Uh, I was like, oh, cool, I can film the boys now. Like, basically, like, everyone's not tied up anymore. I'm going to film the boys. I had, uh, I'd seen a few other, like, YouTubers and stuff from BMX do, like, day in the life, ride around the city type stuff. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I like, I like this idea. And I was already used to just kind of filming a lot of nonsense and making like joke edits anyway. And I'd said for years, I don't 
like watching just skating. Like I hate it. And I hate how I, well, I don't hate it. Like I still like classic videos and they resonate with me, but there's a lot more to skating. Like the, like all my favorite moments of skating are, are usually not the top tier pinnacle six skating. It, it's something like goofy and fun. And, uh, I didn't really know what it, what I was going to do. I just started filming it. I had like a rough sketch idea in my head of, I wanted to capture the fun moments and the process and the inside jokes and the camaraderie and also some six skating too. Uh, but I didn't really know what I was doing till like the third or fourth, like go at it. That's like around like, you know, for the streets episode four, that's where I was like, okay, I think I found a pattern. Um, so it was just kind of, I just kind of fumbled into it. I just started with a, not a clear picture. Okay. Was there any like resistance from any of the guys? Because, <laughs> and in particular, looks as if he hates life every time you point the camera at him. Like he, I don't think I've seen him look directly at the camera or you once when it's happening. Um, has like, have any of the guys been like, Oh, don't know. I don't know if I want to do this. Don't know if I want to like, I don't see me people see me like talking shit or like being a dumbass on on camera like maybe have maybe. you ever had someone just follow you around all day and shove a camera in your face and like expect you to talk and be funny that's what i mean like the bummer <laughs> it's like hard it's awkward and it, 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 it a lot of times too it can be freaking annoying and it's hard for me to gauge that too because i kind of like it too whenever people are getting a little bugged and frazzled um <laughs> but uh everyone at first was like whoa yeah oh hey like i just said some crazy shit don't post that since we're all good friends i know <laughs> when the joke has gone too far and i don't want them to get canceled severely because don't lie to yourself everyone that's listening when you're just with your team everyone's getting canceled if that gets out yeah uh, yeah anywho. <laughs> oh yeah if, if any like if any friendship groups dm like instagram dm like group thing that they have for organizing sessions or whatever gets made public all mm. of you are done for that's yeah. yeah well it's all of us together everyone so it's okay we're we're gonna be fine yeah uh anywho so i i want to shout out i've said this before i want to shout out beer for loosening everyone up and making them talk more fluidly on camera fantastic also the third or fourth go, everyone got used to it. It became more natural. You, you stop seeing the camera so much as you just see your friends and it's easy to talk with it. Um, as for Anthony, Anthony doesn't, he doesn't hate it. I think uh, that, you know, that he's just, he's just more, uh, he's not as uh, purposefully animated and he doesn't play the game. You know, as True. as much he does sometimes, like that peanut gallery award. Since you watched the video, that's funny, dude. Oh, and I, that mean, was, I mean, he that loves was he loves he loves shit talking on people's tracks. Yeah, I mean, but that's. Yeah, but I'm also like, too, like Anthony has a harder job than most because he's usually driving people around. He's usually picking the spots, and whenever people get to the spots and complain about the spots, that's a bummer. And on top of that, too, you're going to put on skates and try to maybe get a clip with me, but also get out his own camera and also film his own shit, too, separately. There's a lot going on, dude. So I would say it's more focused, maybe, or he secretly hates filming for Jumbo and hasn't told me. One of the two. It could be either. I don't know. I think I think he just likes being grumpy. Um it's got to be hard for you though as well though because I feel like if you take on that responsibility of of wanting to document as much as possible from the session as a consequence you miss out on a lot like you don't get to skate or like you don't get to participate in certain things because you're like well I've always got a record on in, in case something good happens or mm -hmm. yeah it's a bummer <laughs> like that it comes at a cost yeah definitely like even I, I, even just filming for a video like if someone's like oh what i get a trick you're like cool then i'm gonna like get cold because you're not like or i'm gonna have to warm up afterwards if i want to get a clip but what you're doing is not just like an obstacle filming someone or getting two or three clips there you're literally filming for like the majority of the day so it's like 
you, you're missing out on even more than if someone was just filming for like a traditional video. For the first six months, it was hard. Well, no, actually, eh, backwards. It wasn't hard. First six months wasn't hard because I was coming over a knee issue, right? Uh, as that went away slowly, and it's basically almost all the way gone, and I can skate more frequently, it's become a bit more of a bummer. However, I've gotten accustomed to set the camera down, skate for 15 minutes. Hey, can someone hold this? And I'll put it on full auto. Don't even zoom. Just as long as you get my feet in it. I'll get one okay. clip. That's usually good enough because I can only do like three tricks well anyway. Back to filming. And that's great. And that's enough. And uh, I'm going to try out getting more on the Barcelona trip. I want to see if I can like at least at every other spot get one with the boys. Um, but if that doesn't work out that's fine too because i find a lot of value not just skating but like creating skating stuff so it, it's for for the bummer it is to not be able to skate as much i i also have the like i feel really good about what it is i'm doing while not skating too so it's fine okay can't relate to that at all. I don't. That's what it. I'm telling myself. Yeah. I'm <laughs> got to stay happy here somehow, man. Um, not like uh, yeah. I think what you guys have kind of stumbled upon, whether yeah by design or by accident, is I, I think you guys have got something really good, and it definitely. I think it resonates with people. It resonates with me because I enjoy that kind of seeing a kind of i don't i don't want to watch a video of just the best skaters in the world that don't look as if they have anything in common or like you have these like pro teams for skate companies and it's like these people don't look like they're friends they don't look like they hang out they just look like random people assigned like brought together on, and you see them in videos and you're like yes this is not exciting but then you see you guys like having the back and forth and like messing around and just genuinely having fun with each other. And I think that can be just as inspiring and motivating as seeing someone doing some incredibly impressive skating. And there is also very impressive skating taking place at the same time. I mean, you've got Andrew Broom getting tech as hell or Zach Gutlweiler just kind of appearing out of nowhere back from not skating for ages and just true spin topside and, like handrails and stuff and like just making it look far too easy or Michael Craft just being weird or Caleb just hucking himself and taking an absolute beating and not caring like there's 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 great skating but there's also so much more going on I, I'll say I don't hate watching the best in the world do what they do I think it's fantastic like when I see like you know, the Rossi's team in X country doing their thing. Yeah, you're right. Maybe there's not the same kind of level of like friendship, but I, I would argue that I show... I'd argue they're one of the examples where there does seem like a connection. Like lo loads of those guys are actually friends in real life. That's, that's one of the ones I would defend. That example, that example, <laughs> whatever. Um, regard all, all I'm trying to say is I think it's good to have it all. It's good to have the best in the world doing these awful things that I also would look like I was having a bad time doing too because it's scary. There's also enough room for a bunch of fucking like weirdos out there joking around on the internet too. We can have it all. We can just do it all. We can have like the elite pros and we can have the whatever the fuck is going on over here. And that's fine. And I would rather most of the time just fuck around over here though. So this is my place and this is where I live and this is what I do. <laughs> okay. W political what? answer. Political. Political answer. This is true. Yeah. This is true. It's very disappointing. Um, what do what do you think it is that resonates with people? Because okay. obviously you guys have like built up an audience and I feel like every Look. video, every video is like got like a decent amount of views for, mm -hmm. for a bunch. Let's be honest, majority unspot. There's only like, two sponsored skaters and the whole crew like it's 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 got a following and it's building and there there definitely does seem to be momentum so what what do you think people are like latching on to um okay 
in my head, I was getting ready to give you a non-political answer, but I'm going to have to backtrack and go with this this first thing. Also, oh my. my computer was freaking out for a second, so I had to figure that out real quick. Oh, no. Right. Um, so based off of what I've read from what people have told me, I think, as you'd said earlier, I think I think camaraderie is important. And while I think it's important also for people to see the biggest and best like version of skating, like what's what can be sick, I also think it's important to understand the best moments. And I don't keep skating for 25 years because of uh, the, the, the sickest trick I've ever done. I keep skating because it's so sick to go out with the boys and sit in a ditch together. <laughs> for four hours and drink a couple of beers and laugh and and go through the the process of of skating as a whole and i think watching a session of friends of all skill levels like we have dudes that have just started skating skating with like one of the modern professionals of the moment and seeing that kind of like skill gap and still everyone having a blast i think that's important and that was the whole point of starting the thing from the begin with was to show like the other awesome moments that like we don't get to see very frequently or if we do i just didn't think it was it was done enough that was the point and that's why i think people kind of keep watching it i think i don't know once i make the things i don't usually rewatch the things okay. you know okay because I have to like go through the whole day and then rewatch the whole day and then repurpose the whole day. It's way too, I, I'm like, it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's like the movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like every, every, I, I relive my Saturday every Sunday and then I post it on Monday. It's a lot of reliving. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I, I like that the only, the only pro in your crew, Andrew Broom also happens to be like one of the most picked on members of the group. And like every video without fail, people just rag on him constantly. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe that's just jealousy. Um, or maybe it's just Anthony. It's probably just Anthony. Uh, we'll see. I'll let I'll let Andrew answer that question when he comes on here. Okay. Um, all right. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, uh, I've been told I, I by multiple another, people that's never going to happen, but yeah. Um, you I think, think another I'm reason is, and this will kind of be a non-political answer to your last question. Another reason is this. I don't like elitism at all. Like I fucking hate it. I hate like back in the day, especially if if the good guys are out filming, you know, they might not answer your phone call and that sucks. And I hate that kind of like, you know, standoffish elite bullshit. I fucking hate it. And I always have. And I also think that the lack of that vibe, the, the, I like that we can take someone like a Kudo, right? One of the best skaters on the planet. And Instead of like every being on a pedestal, come in, just be one of the boys. We're going to fuck with you all day. It's going to be fantastic. And same with Andrew, one of the best in the world. Getting uh, un silly all day with Andrew. It's it's fantastic. And I, I like, I think maybe that's another reason why. It's just fun. It's not, it's not anything else. It's not trying to be any, I'm not trying to do shit. I'm trying to have a good time. And make like some uh, just a bunch of camo stuff. Apparently, just just have a good time. I mean, you've, you've <laughs> just got camo to, stuff. You got to oh, keep that, that redneck attire. Um, you've got to yeah. keep it stocked up. You know, you've got to, you've got to stay legit. Um, I what I like most about it is the like the investment in each kind of individual person in it, and I think. Like, there's got to be people that I mean, I'm assuming you read the comments underneath every video. There's got to be people that people in the comments regularly reference going, I love that guy, or he's my favorite, or like him for MVP, or did it. Like, I've definitely got my jumbo favorites. Heath, absolutely. I love the fact that he's always either hungover or drunk. He looks as if like 
he looks as if the party and the skating just kind of seem to overlap far too much in the most hilarious way possible. Um, love Zach Gutweiler. Like, I'd never, I don't think I'd ever really seen much footage of him before. I think I'd, he, he appeared like briefly in an Adam Johnson video once. And then other than that, my actual like knowledge of what he was capable of. And then when he started coming out and just being like this, La like he would land like the sh most stupidly difficult trick and then just laugh his head off and be like can't believe I didn't die there or like just gap into like you were showing him gapping into the bank and he's like almost sketching out and eating shit but just rolling away laughing his head off and I'm like he looks like he's having the best time like I want to skate with that guy like st stuff like that I, th I think I think in Jumbo you definitely get like invested in the characters and and the personalities and I, I think that's his I think that's his greatest asset mm -hmm. I think that being good isn't good enough and everyone said that forever this isn't like new news I'm not you know, and, and and you know that and half the audience probably just tuned out mentally when I said that but like it's 20 percent skating 20% style, 20% personality, that's just 60%. I don't know where the other 40 went, but you get where I'm going here. Yeah, like, how, it's, why, it's why the guys on X Games were never anyone's favorite skater. Like Marco Hinsi or whatever, like winning X Games gold and stuff like that. People were like, you don't care. Well, hold on. I do care. 20% competition performance. There we no, go. Now no. we're at 80. No. Holy shit. <laughs> we'll think of the next one here in a minute. Um, but yeah, like that's that's just one one tiny thing and skating can be so much more than that if we let it to be and uh we're, we're finding more and more avenues and ways to show it that are different especially now like people like you for instance you you've gone above and beyond with content creation uh tom moise your best friend tom moise who's dodging a game of skate uh with you at winter clash which is a travesty that he would dodge such an awesome contest anyways i'm just saying like eight years ago we didn't even know that was a possibility to make stuff like that and maybe we did know we were just too lazy to do it people are less lazy now i think we can be more inventive and we can keep pushing outside of the norm outside of just filming tricks and putting it to music like there's so much more to do man and i so much more than we know. I can't wait to figure out what the rest of that is. Maybe that'll be the other 20%. Maybe, maybe. I also think a lot of it to do is with is just like getting older and realizing this isn't going to be around forever. You're not going to be able to do it forever. Or when you're younger and like you're in your teens and your 20s, you're so kind of concerned about what other people think and so self-conscious. And then I think after you get past a certain age, you're like, I just don't care anymore. Like, <laughs> Like people have people have like come up to me in real life and been like, You're a fucking dark or whatever, like the stuff you and I'm like, I I know. Like you can't that's you can't I don't offend, agree with you. You can't offend I, me with that insult or like insult me. Like I, I know that's fine. <laughs> I don't agree with you on on that. And I want to say this to all of rollerblading. I don't think we're old. And I think if you want to put in the time and effort to like keep your body well i think we can skate for a lot longer than we think we can because i remember not too long ago when we thought 25 was old i when yeah. we thought 30 oh wow he's 30 wow hope he can keep going that blows my mind dude uh i think I, we're gonna see 50 year old dude like uh, i'm trying to think of a pro that's like a fucking Billy O'Neill could be a great example. In 13 years, it won't surprise me if I see that full true top porn of down rail over 50. It won't surprise me. Um, I think the the first and second generations of dudes just skated like old dudes right out the gate. And the style never changed. And we were just like, yeah, those are the old guys, man. They look like they're skating like old guys. And then they were 22. They just skated that way. And you look at a Richie Eisler, got to be over 40, right? Yes. But also, I feel like the, the examples you're using are truly awful examples because they're like outliers and vastly more skilled than the average rollerblader. 
So it's not. I don't. I'm saying it's possible. I'm saying it's possible. It's not impossible. We can do this. That's like that's like going Tony Tony Hawk's still seven twenty invert ramps. Oh, man, all skateboarders, all skateboarders be able to like do this. No, this Tony Hawk. He's probably paying people, for like injections every week. <laughs> people play beer league hockey, beer league soccer. It's been beer league for us, baby. We're just gonna stay in the beer league forever. And and I think we can I don't think we're gonna be too old to do anything. I think that my crew could turn fifty or sixty and still wash probably at least some of the younger dudes at some point. I mean, the, you, we'll find you, out. You do have a crew of very good skiers, but then the way that they treat their bodies with the booze at every session, um, you might age faster than you think. I'm drinking non-alcoholic root beer, sir. Thank you very much. As opposed to we're, alcoholic We're only rascals root beer. on film. Um, Monday through Friday, I'm not a rascal. That's lies. I've seen your Instagram posts where you're at the bar and every, like I've seen your midweek ventures to the bar. Okay, I have a skip day. How about that? Like All Tuesdays right. are my skip day. Wednesdays we're back to hanging okay. out. You know, whatever. I'm figuring it out. Right. I love how you called that a non-alcoholic root beer. Is there an alcoholic root beer? Uh, you'll see. That's our next line of product, actually. It's a jumbo alcoholic root beer. Okay. I have heard I've heard rumors about more more jumbo products. Is there anything you're gonna and and you're gonna tell us about now? I've heard I've uh -huh. heard you've I've heard you've got some some plans. We were supposed to have more like months ago, and uh, whatever we whatever it was we were making, to which I will not disclose at the moment because it might not ever happen, got delayed. Something crazy happened with China, and it's just in limbo out there. In limbo, it's been in limbo for months, and. I don't know what happened with that. Yes, we do have a second run coming of things that are some of what we've done, some of what we haven't done. My goal is, my goal is this, my goal is this. I don't want to just be a like wheel company or a frame company or a t-shirt company. I want to just do stuff. If I want to make some laces, sick. If I want to make a freaking frame or whatever, yeah, I'm going to drop one. You know, here's our frame for the season, and then after that, it's just gone. You know, uh, if if I want to do anything like that, like, a, like I've got a bunch of ideas I don't want to say out loud because I don't want anyone to do it first. I, um, I love how you're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to do, and then you've literally told me nothing. It's hard. It's hard because some of these ideas are easy to make for people that already have money. Um <laughs> So I don't want them to steal my funny idea first. Um, but anyways, I'm just saying like we want to do products like one off. Like I don't want to just be one one thing. I want to be able to do whatever all the time. I also don't want to directly compete with people long term either. Like I want my boot companies, liner companies, I want them to do well and succeed. I'd never I would never want to like compete all the time with people that I think deserve to do well um because my at the end of the day jumbo's gonna be a joke to me it's kind of a joke company it's just for the lols um and i i'm i'm not quitting my nine to five for this one which which companies do you think deserve to do well um for the reason you waited a full year to have me on I would say the ones that have made it over the five year marker have established names and like real quality products behind them. If you've been around for a while, you've been in the game for a while, you have respect somehow. I'm not talking about just being a pro skater. I'm talking about like if you've had skin in the game for over five years and your product is quality, but hats off to you. Even if I don't like you, hats off to you. Like I respect you. Um, and that's great. That was the that was the most neutral answer ever. Maybe we should have done this on a Friday or a Saturday night when you were like had a buzz and we're feeling a little bit more feeling a little bit more uh, controversial. Um, no, 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 no. Like honestly, like I, I'll say this is an honest answer. Doing actually having to do shit and not being lazy and just quitting and then just bitching about what everyone else does has softened me up 
and made me a lot more less critical and a lot more respectful of people that push and grind for skating because I do think that there's money in it. I do. I don't think there's a lot of it and I don't think it can get spread around a whole, whole lot of people. So for them to put their, their, their livelihoods on the line for the sake of us. And if you spend any time doing stuff uh, for us, but, uh, salute, like, thank you. And that's it. I, I do know what you mean. I like, especially when you look online, you see these like Facebook groups or whatever, and people are just talking shit on brands or like specific people that run brands. And you're like, do you have any idea just how much it takes out of you to do something like that? Or like how much of your free time or your salary from your le- real life job sacrifice? And then people go, oh, they're just like try cash in or make a quick buck or da 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 da. And you're like, do you if you do you honestly think that's their intention? Because if it is, like you're basically also calling them stupid because no one's making a quick buck out of rollerblading. Like you know, maybe during the pandemic, if you just happen to have launched a brand just before then or around then and got lucky with having stock in at time. But for the most part, people are investing and they're lucky if they're getting their investment back. And it's like it's, Do people it, actually talk like that though? About but I understand talking about about skating and tricks. Nice. Like your brain god rant earlier. You but see as it, far as you like see brand, it about- you see it about would, brands as well. You definitely see it about like products people release and people are quick to just shit all over them and be like, oh, dude, like that'll never you know, like have you ever tried it? Have you ever like if if you've skated it and you think it's trash, then that's you're entitled to that opinion. You know, once you purchase something, you have consumer rights. It's like yeah. buy it's like when you eat a meal. If you thought it tasted terrible, you you're not hating, you're just giving your feedback. But when you see people like when a new thing comes out or even when it's not been out yet and people are like, oh, it looks just like this. That it looks just like a rip off of that or like that sucks. And you're like, just give it like give it its chance. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because well, something looks similar doesn't mean it's going to perform similar as well. Exactly. For instance, I will say I, there are definitely similarities between a standard and a mesmer. If you just look at them for five seconds, a profile view of both, there's that little stripe, there's a sole plate, they're kind of a plastic boot with a cuff that's a little bit high. You would think, oh, but what the heck is a ripoff, you know? But if you take any time to look at the the detail, you'd notice it performs drastically differently, and that's not fair. So those people are idiots. I would say the standard shares more in similarity with, like, aesthetics with like a usd sway actually and that's what i'm most excited about i'm hoping it's going to be a slightly like a usd sway that i prefer a little bit more that's my they could probably sway you into it my way um uh, we veered totally off topic there there was there was something i was wanting to ask you about jumbo has there been any so what i'm quite surprised about is there's been almost no conflict Bear in mind, like the majority of, and what I mean with that is, we're like the general public, or we're like getting kicked out of spots, or like just kind of debates you get into with people walking past, going, "I don't like what you're doing," or like that's like get off, that's not your property or whatever. You've I've only actually seen one. I think I've, I only remember seeing one kick out, and the guy just came along and was like, "Can you stop?" And you're like, "Can we have a few more minutes?" And he's like, "Yeah, you can have a few more minutes." And then you had a few tricks and then left. But there hasn't been any kind of like. There hasn't been any kind of like friction with the general yeah. public or property owners while you've been filming. Has has anything like that happened at all during that period, or you just haven't captured it, or is it just not happened? Uh, generally, if we get kicked out, it's pretty quick and it happens really fast. Uh, I'll say a lot of the spots we go to, we know when and where to be. Like we know if it's going to be a bust or not. We know we're going to roll up with like ten or fifteen dudes. So with that in mind, we're not going smack downtown to an open business. Like we know like, hey, we need to, this is the spot on this day. Heath and Anthony are both beautiful when it comes to like researching the weekend. They're already on Google Maps. They've found the place or they've found footage and they know how to to get into it. They've looked up the store hours. They know when it's going to be closed. Like they're fantastic people. That's why we haven't had a lot of issues 
I will say the last one, uh, the very first spot of the day, where these it's the best spot in Austin, these beautiful, perfect ledges. I did the in spin out spin tutorial on it. Yes. Which was a nightmare. Um, but anyways, uh I showed up, I was so excited. Oh, I was like, oh, I'm about to fuck these ledges up. I'm gonna get clips today, very juiced. And right out of the gate, construction workers were there. One of them was just staring at Mick, Heath, and Caleb uh through a window and mick just flips him off for no reason just incites this guy and this guy's like hey what in the world comes outside he's like get out of here and and uh mick's like whatever man you're a tool blah, blah, blah. like you're getting all uppity with him and i was like what what's happening it's eight in the morning no one's supposed to be here i was very upset at that so yes we do get kicked out it is seldom and uh and I'm going to go ahead and say it's always Mick's fault. I was about to say, the story you just, the story you outlined, you probably could have got away with skating there for a bit longer if he hadn't provoked him because the guy might have just sat there and fumed in his cabin of his truck or whatever for a while and not yeah. done it. But as soon as someone sticks the finger up at you, you're, you're kind of forced into action. <laughs> I'm, throwing, I'm throwing Mick under the bus. This is Mick's fault. So... I've got um, another really great Mick story that I can't share yet, but I'm going to share it in a couple weeks and it's going to be great. And you'll see. Anywho, that's suspense for later. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, actually. <laughs> that's like the most secondary school teenage girl like thing to say ever. You're like, I know a secret. I have a secret. I can't, I can't tell you. <laughs> well, then don't tell me you know. <laughs> I've got this really great story. You're not having it, though. You're not, you're not getting it. It's just about, I'm just throwing Mick under the bus all day, boys. Right. I mean, just in preparation for going away. It's fine. It's fine. Um, what, what have been some of the, like the highlights from Jumbo, whether it's like, I don't know, surprise video. No, I don't mean, I don't mean, video. I don't mean your awards <laughs> where you're like, where you, you got, you got antsy because you never get selected for any of these end of year award things. I mean, like, as in what's, is, have there been any like, just sessions here, you're like, whoa, that was great. Because wasn't there, wasn't there one where like a guy just came over with like a bunch of burgers or something, or there another one where a guy Hell came over yeah. with a bunch of beers, like stuff like that. Like I would say, hey, this has just made my day. That was awesome. Uh, there's been a few things that have happened. Um, uh, to to the point of, well, I don't want to say all that. Austin Beer Works is a brewery here in Austin. They're like a really big one. Um, and, uh, one, one of our guys knew one of their guys. Uh, I don't know if I should like shout everyone's names out on camera, so I'm not gonna, anywho, we wound up getting the hookup through jumbo. Just like we can get like Austin beer works beer and take it to the sessions. And we just show up and be like, get, get, if I have a big session, I can get a big old pallet. They sponsored our DIY event, our fundraiser event. Just gave us a bunch of beer for that. And if I wanted to go every weekend and get a ton of it, I could. I don't because we need to be a little productive. And nobody knows how to say no, except me right now saying, no, I'm not driving out there and getting all that stuff. So that's been a great thing, similar to the burger thing where the dude just rolled up with a bunch of burgers. Um, there, there can be like kooky people around doing silly stuff, but because we generally try to stay out of like big public spots. We don't see a whole lot of people that often. So nothing outside of the ordinary for our group. Like if we were downtown all day, like if we were downtown all day, we'd see crazy shit, but we don't. We're, we're, we're skating in the suburbs a lot. I, I did wonder about that. Like why you guys neglected going into like kind of more urban areas because it does seem like a lot of things you go to are like industrial estates or schools or like just random ditches in the middle of nowhere like surely well, downtown, downtown's been killed like downtown's been killed for 20 years and it's a austin's actually not that big of a city like if you go to the downtown area it's like a small city massive population but like you know there's not a lot going on down there that mason or jason howard or you know any of the the legends of old have already destroyed uh mm -hmm. so 
I do, however, I will say South by Southwest, if if, if anyone knows what that is, it's like one of the bigger uh, events in the States, I think. Uh, that's going to happen in a month or so. And I would like to take my camera downtown and just skate through the chaos. I was thinking about that already, but it'd be hard. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet, but I like where your head's at. More urban area crazy shit. I just feel like there would be more, there'd definitely be more happening or definitely more public interaction. God, skating through South by Southwest, I feel like that would just be like a sea of drunk people or drunk or uh, really, really, just... high, really, really high people. <laughs> do you, do you know who the stuttering skater is? Yes, but weirdly, not that long ago, like it was only... It was not too long ago someone put me onto them and then I had mm -hmm. Duran on the podcast and Duran was like, he has got the hugest following. And I was like, really? And then oh, I, looked at, I looked at his YouTube and was like, whoa, he does yeah. insane numbers. Okay. I also, this, I don't want to rehash it then if you just talked about it with Duran, but uh, yeah, like two, two weeks ago, I was like, what the fuck? This guy, you know, this guy's killing it. And I saw all this stuff and I was like, I just followed it and he's just skating around New York. So I thought, once again, just going to steal his whole idea and just skate around Austin. <laughs> Why not? I, I'd be, like, it was when, when I looked at the videos, I was like, oh, he's just skating around. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. He's skating around like New York City, one of the most fascinating like urban areas in the world. Like, of, like, of course, people are going to be into this. And the fact he can clearly skate and like he's like weaving in at cars, firing like in front of buses and stuff and i'm like man oh, that's i'm like that what you're doing looks so much more dangerous than anything i would do like down a rail or whatever like you could just get rolled over by like a massive vehicle yeah yeah fuck that <laughs> big city people are built different man i'm i'm i gotta wait for like all cars to stop and have nothing moving i cannot focus yep yeah that, so. um and he's like doing tricks and stuff while he's he's like doing he'll be doing little like carves and pivots and stuff while weaving in a busy traffic and i'm like man all it takes is for like a motorbike or something to come between these cars that you're just not seeing yeah it give it kind of gives me anxiety watching them a little bit but yeah i definitely see where the appeal is i think um, too uh, to steal this guy's awesome idea um he has a wide audience and i i, I hate if y'all talked about this on your last podcast the duran i think he has a wide audience because it's easy to understand like the act of skating in an interesting place it's not like a technical five piece switch up on something you know like a rail and there needs to be a little bit more of that into skating too more personality more just vibing maybe some more cruising um i'm not saying let's change it all i like tricks i only grind um but as far as like content creation I, and stuff i've like, seen you i've seen you stomp a 540 in a wall right i know i know what you can yeah, I uh, put my feet on the wall but yeah. uh yeah like why not like why not take a break one day from tricks like why not film a jumbo episode <laughs> and people might hate this but it's just the boys cruising around austin hey this is our favorite place to get shrimp and fries or some shit i don't know like this is this is where we go like we're gonna just cruise around downtown like this is what it looks like and i think that that's fun and if some if some other crew did that like wanted to show us the block that's that's not that could be fun if you do it the right way i think anything can work yeah yeah definitely. i'll find out if i'm wrong if my views plummet that's this um, is true <laughs> um i also wonder whether the stutter and skater did that before that kind of viral video came out of the guy getting hit by the car you know the the guy in london jack tiercy or uh, yeah what? yeah he's he, always vibing like old school hip-hop yeah he was doing it like between yeah. cars and then get hit by a car door i wonder if the stutter and skater was already doing it then or if he picked up an action camera after seeing that because i feel like a lot of people started doing that after seeing that video cool Good. More people started filming cool shit. That sounds great. Uh, I'm here yeah, for it, man. I, I definitely think I, there's there's definitely a an opportunity for like showing off your city through the eyes of skating, not just showing skating. I have like 
like toyed with the idea of doing like a this is our city like these are places to go for like food or like this is a good stop or like these are this is like a locals only kind of secret that you you can navigate this or like yeah I think I think stuff like that is quite interesting. Here's here's a thing though that might be missing. All these dudes that we're referencing is just one guy normally. What if it's a whole freaking crew of dudes mobbing the city, doing the things, maybe some tricks along the way too. Like, oh man, I'm like getting pretty juiced right now. Like I I want to go, I want to try this. Not soon. Not soon. After Europe for sure, but I'm happy we talked today. This is a good idea. But I think right. that, yeah, I think that is why a lot of, you get a lot of these YouTube creators that do just do it on their own and people are like, oh, why are they just making all this stuff on their own? They're weird. And you're like, no, it's because they can't find like-minded people who are as dedicated as they are that want to do these projects that like, think how hard it is to like corral a group of friends to make a skate video. Like Ant knows, you know, as well, like how just like insanely like frustrating that can be trying to be like guys come on guys like you've not finished a section like you need to get an end or, or like you've got too many top souls like you need to get some other stuff and then time drags on and everyone else gets less and less motivated and you're like well i still want to do it why does no one else want to do it and that's i feel like that's how we've got this kind of generation of people creating skate content because they're, they're like well i'm motivated and i want to do it so i'm just going to find a way to do it on my own if i can't find other people that want to <laughs> like invest in this as much as I do. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to talk about format and like long form format, which I don't really want to, but I'll say it briefly at least. I don't know if the reason classic videos were the way they were was because you get one shot, one VHS tape, make the reel as long as you can on the tape because this is the one tape and once it's over it's done so that's why we were filming full lengths back in the day makes sense now that we can post literally every day we can post on multiple platforms everyone all the time can see it it doesn't make much sense to do it for the average person hence why they're not motivated anymore but i will say i do think it's important for us to keep a lot of our classic styles of media intact because it is a part of our culture. It is respected. I love a full video, a full part sections, you know, a team video. God, how rare is that? That's so cool. If that would happen. Um, but I can see just based off of how things have changed, why people wouldn't be motivated. But instead of complaining about it and going, I think we should do this like old times, you know, I, I, I'll I say it again, with all these new options, if we weren't lazy and we weren't just focused on putting out like a reel every day, what could we do that we haven't done yet with what it is we now have? And I don't have an answer. I have a question. I hope somebody answers it because that, that would be, that, that's going to be cool to see. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll go along with that. Yeah. <laughs> big big period on that sentence <laughs> um so obviously you guys have got the crew but there are some there's some notable exceptions from the group that filmed candy and ends to the group that's now in jumbo mason richard has appeared in like a couple of episodes but he seems to have just disappeared off the face of the earth now i know he recently got married but um is he i'm guessing he's just stopped skating again well, he moved. Right. So he's already like hours away as is. Also, and I've done this too, there are moments in your life where you have to take a step back and you have to like focus on coming up. Because we all, I think, early on at least, a good majority of my friends that I know, we focused way too hard on only skating. We weren't worried about careers, money, like any sort of normal life. And uh, I think it's healthy to take a step back, especially him. He's like young, younger than us, you know? So true. like, get your shit together, take a step back, do well. And he is doing well for himself. I'm, I'm happy and proud for him. Uh, and that's good. And I'm sure he'll always skate, dude. I don't think this is ever going to leave us. That's why we see such a large uh, resurgence of back to blading people. 
I don't think it ever leaves. Even if you take a break, you'll come back. And so will he. Yeah, yeah, that's very likely. Uh, someone someone else who's notably been missing that a few people have mentioned to me, actually, Brandon Bobadilla. He was, I felt like he was quite like a firm part of the group for a while. And now he, he also seems to have just disappeared as well. He came out uh, last, the, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. He was around. Um, he just like, I filmed a few a few clips of him trying some handicap rail, but it just didn't happen. Him and Mick were doing something. And then like, because the session was so huge, it was all like, hey, you know, John Sullivan's doing a backslide. And I had to like run across the place like, oh shit, there's the backslide. Film it real quick. Um, so like I missed a few of those moments. But uh, yeah, I, I guess maybe he's got like a different schedule or just, uh, you know, skates with different people. He also lives like out of town a little bit too. Right. So, you know, if you know if you want to come out, you can. I always set, tell everyone, hit me up. You know, you can come out. Okay. okay. Maybe I'm a little bit too open with that too, because some of the sessions do get pretty big, and it is hard to corral that many people into like one spot, not get busted, still get clips, like not have a seven car, eight car caravan. It can get a little wild. Yeah, I I do I do wonder about the the pragmatics of so many people at the session drinking. But who's 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 driving? I am. I'm driving. Uh, Ant's driving, and like we don't. I, like, I've seen Ant drinking beers in the videos. Yeah, no, no, you didn't. No. And in, in the last episode, he's in the last no. episode, he's like he's like screw the donuts, where are the beers? No, he must have not been driving then. Okay. I feel like in every American movie, I see the couple go out to dinner, have like four cocktails, and then the ne the very next scene is them driving home from the movie. Oh. And I'm, like, I'm like, why do all these Hollywood films perpetuate drink driving? <laughs> no, it's it's it didn't happen. I'm sure somebody else was driving. Right. Okay. We don't play that game. We would never be that irresponsible. Well, I want you to know I'm sending this to the feds. They know what you look like. They know all your names. They're going to be at the next session and there's going to be breathalyzers. That's that's all. It was I'm all fake and it's called movie magic. So right. also, even... I just want to say this. I just want to say this so people don't actually get mad at me because drunk driving is terrible and bad. And I promise we don't do that for real. I'm making light of it and sounding sarcastic um, that everyone is always straight all the time. You shouldn't do that. And uh, what else am I going to say? What else are you yeah, going to say? Whatever. Oh right. yeah, I was going to say, like, dude, it's hard. I couldn't, I couldn't do what I'm doing anyway if I was getting wasted in the middle of the day. Yeah. No way I could do that. Now after the session, let's freaking go. But like during the session, like the guys that are like going for it, they're probably in the back seat. So, and that's fine. Go for it. Have fun. Like get a clip. All right. But don't. Yeah. That's my responsible dad mode commentary right there we I don't agree. support drinking and driving nor do we do it and that's that on the record right right that's okay. on the record does anyone in the group have kids yet yeah yeah um gutweiler does i was um, i was about to say zach zach's but zach's the only one isn't he? a couple of them a couple of them are could be working on it but i don't know um that's their business. I'll let them tell you about it. Uh, I mean, John John Sullivan doesn't really count because his partner also skates and they just bring their daughter out on the session. So that's not really... Yeah, full dad mode. I don't feel uh, like that counts. That doesn't count. I'll, I think a, a large part of my generation and like newer, if you're in like a, a metro area for sure, like the birth rate's for sure in decline. And I don't have a kid. And I don't really, I don't think I want one. Um, I've thought about it pretty deeply. I think that there would be fulfillment in it. And I think I would also be an all right pops, but it also isn't going to like make or break my life, whether or not I have a kid, because it's just, there's, there's two positives. You have a kid and have like family fulfillment. You don't have a kid and you have all the other fun stuff that comes with it too. Like whatever. Um, it just never presented itself as an opportunity and I'm not like crying about it. And I don't think any of the other boys are either, but maybe they are and men don't vocalize their emotions with each other. So I'd never know anyway. I don't know. Tell it to your therapist if you got one. 
Okay, okay. Um, you gave me way more of an answer to that than I was expecting, but right. Um, well, actually, no, that, that's interesting you brought it up because these are things I've been thinking about the past couple of years. Like, you know, mid-30s, going on, getting closer to 40s every day, like, what's the legacy you want to leave behind? How do you want to live your life? And like, what's actually important when you're 70, 80 years old, you looking back on what you did, are all the little trips you took like worth it to, to, to have a meaningful life that you're proud of when you die? You know, do you, based on how you feel about an afterlife too, how does that like factor into what it is you do in this one? Um, I've thought about that like pretty deeply. And that's why I gave you, I guess, a longer answer and come to that conclusion pretty confidently. I'm sure there will be some regret, but I also think once I'm in the ground, I'm in the ground and I'll, uh, you know, worry about it then. Yeah. That's there, there's very much that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely don't believe in an afterlife. So I feel like, okay. Do you believe it. in, do you believe in having a kid and it providing a true fulfillment to life and that like everyone should consider doing it at least a bit? No, I, I have a daughter, but I, I very much, I very much this so we've had discussions with mutual friends who have got say they've got kids and their brothers and sisters aren't interested in being aunts right they're like oh it's just so annoying like my brother like doesn't take any interest in my kid and i'm like well they didn't choose to have a kid you mm -hmm. did so you're asking them to take an interest in your kid they didn't ask to be an uncle yeah but they are an uncle so they they should be more invested in my kid and i'm like well no you're kind of forcing that upon them like if they maybe they just don't want to hang out with kids that's fine like they're they're entitled to that choice it's a bit true though i think you know that's part of the burden of life like you have to wake up you have to kind of accept the fate of being alive having like relationships with other people and that's one of them you know that's just gonna it's gonna happen you could ignore it all you want but that just makes you a dick so True, but like yeah yeah I, I just think i can see it from both sides or like when you see someone they're like god they've been married for like i don't know 10 years whatever like they've not why have they not had any kids and you're like maybe they just don't want them it doesn't make them bad maybe people as yeah, well exactly like just also that's fine that's not any it's not any of your business <laughs> i would never want to say to somebody like this is something I considered as well. Like I would never want to say to somebody like, yeah, you should, you should totally have a kid. Like it brings that life fulfillment. Cause what, like that's a bummer for people that literally physically can't like, I don't think that's a requirement to have a quality life. I, I think it, it can be a part of one. I think it can be beautiful. I don't think it's a requirement. And uh, I think all the pressure uh, shouldn't exist. Like to each their own long form answer to your question. Why don't the boys have kids? Eh, boys ain't having kids anymore. I don't know. What are they doing out there? I not did not. Kids? I did not say why are the boys not having kids. I'm just saying it may, it makes it easier for the group to meet up every weekend and have these sessions because I didn't think many of them did have kids, yeah. which yeah, is the case. That makes a lot of sense. It's um, easy to speak. <laughs> also, I'm, a, I'm I'm an advocate for people not having children because the world is overpopulated and we need to do our part to, you know, reduce that. So, yeah. They're... Hey, but we stay practicing, baby. Bye. Bye. Right. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I had to get one. Give me one. That's that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for more of this throughout, but you, you let me down. Um, right. I think you should let people in on a private joke that exists in Jumbo that not everyone knows about. Do you know what I'm referencing? No, nope, no clue. When someone lands a trick and one or multiple people in the group will go, ah, I think you should explain to the viewers what is actually happening when when that happens. All so right. some, someone lands a trick and either the filmer, you, or multiple people or even everyone in the group will respond to that person landing the trick by going, uh, I think you should uh, elaborate on what's happening there. I don't mean this. I'm not playing coy. I literally don't know what you're talking about. I have heard this is a thing within your scene. Is it like an uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. Like, it's kind of like, oh, you didn't really. 
Like, like if, so, you if someone's to, if someone's got you're trying a goofy to get me line. to explain lava, far side. You're trying to get me to explain landing Goomba. You're trying to get me to explain why we don't let people have like like keep the bullshit, right? What is what is Goomba? Okay, cool. Um, so Goomba, if you've ever played Super Mario Brothers, is one of the bad guys. It's like the little like uh little creatures, they walk one two like that, and you gotta yeah. jump on and squash them. Well, because they walk one two, people land one two. Oh, right, you know? one skate after the other, right? Got you. I've called that Goomba for years. Right. And uh, I don't think it's ever gonna catch on. I sure would like it to. Uh that is it's just what good. I call it. Landing one two, I call it landing Goomba. So yeah, I would call that I, I call that like a step on landing, like as opposed to like a step on grind, a step on landing. Um or like the one two. But yeah, like I mean there's obvious things like yeah, like lava or like slipping out or like not catching the trick properly. But as as for that joke, I have no clue. I literally don't know. If like if you if you watch back any episode of Jumble without fail, it happens multiple times in every episode to the point where after like two or three episodes i was like and what the fuck is going on here and he was like did oh, he explain like, it to you he did explain it to me oh shit well i really don't know man I, I to my knowledge there's no joke it might just be like us vocalizing our uh our disdain for your sloppy trick i don't know that i don't think what- it's a joke he I told think me that's honest. exactly what it was. He said, okay. basically, if someone yeah. if someone lands something a bit sketchy or goofy, one or more people will go, oh, as if to be like, oh. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, now I'm going to pay attention to it later. It's just us basically saying, like, trash, you got to do it again. Right. But it's, yeah, and it's, that's it's, it's, it's everywhere in every not episode. A joke. It's, it's very honest. It's, it's serious. It's Deeply serious. Deeply honest. Real life. It's real life. Yeah. And, I also like when people like regularly in the episodes, people do it to themselves. Like, uh, what was the recent example? There was one where Broom was doing it, the ledge transfer, and like even though he landed, he was like, "No," nah, and like he, he was basically like, like taunting himself as he like came rolling back up up to the start of the run up and stuff like that. It's quite funny. I like that. When when people well, can be, we've, we've been so mean to each other and so militant to each other for so long, like decades, that like even before they're chirping at you, you already know in your own mind. You're already <laughs> yeah. chirping at yourself. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm trash. Oh, I'm so bad. At-. You know, like you're you're just beating yourself up all day, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I do. I, I mean do like that, that too because you're always striving, you're always reaching for the bar. You'll never grasp it, but like that's the only way to. That's how we get better is uh just constant self deprecation. Oh God, oh God. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's the life that, that we chose. Fuck. That's it. That's it. Yep, self self. What is it? Flatul. What's it called? Flankula. What's it called? Self self deprecation. Self deprecation. No, there's there's one where. Was it religious people beat themselves self uh, flag, flag? Oh, oh, oh! What was that called? What was that called? I nope. don't know. Man. Nope. That <laughs> send the Da Vinci quote or whatever as the guys like hitting himself and beating himself with stuff. I can't I remember. remember. I love Flagula- that flagulation. No, that doesn't sound right. I don't think that's right. We're not um, going to remember it because we're we're thinking every other word but that. We'll remember it after it's over. Um. Out of idle curiosity, the last time I interviewed you, you wouldn't tell me what your job was. You you uh-huh. you, ju- you just kept giving me like the most vague explanation possible to the point where I'm pretty sure I ended up calling the interview Cody Sanders' secret agent. And, and I I'm, never will. I'll never tell you what I was doing. What's your new job? What's your job that you're doing? That you told me you just get back from a meeting. What was the meeting? Oh, I got okay. Well, this isn't. This is. I still work for the government. Okay. However, it's for a college, and I do IT. Right. But that's it. That's not very interesting. All right. Yeah, it's not very interesting at all. We shouldn't talk about it on a skate podcast. Especially a tech different. podcast. Maybe we can talk tech, but that's not today, boys. Okay. Okay. Um, Especially because you, you don't work for the government. You work for the CIA, but it's fine. It's fine. We can um, talk about getting fucking tech on skates, man. We're not, we're, right. we're not doing that. But what we are, <laughs> are going to do is we've, I've got, oh, asked, asked anyone if they've got questions for you. People do have questions for you. First, first question. Is this live? No, it's not live. Oh um, God. No. Okay. No. Um, okay. 
I would never do that to myself. Do you honestly think I could pay attention to a comment section while trying to interview someone? I can't do two things at once. Ben uh, does it. You're not as good as Ben. I mean, he's superior both physically and and mentally. I mean, the man's an Adonis. Uh, like, wow. I, I, I can't keep up. Great compliment, um, Adonis. But yeah, questions. I'm sorry. Also, never ever going up against him on a handrail because he seems far too comfortable with them. Um, right, first one comes local, relatively local. Samuel Brownlee, does the name mm -hmm. ring a bell? Yeah, I know. He wants to know what is your hair care regime for that that flowing flowing silver fox mane that you've got. Wow. All right. Um, Share the secret. I don't know if everyone's going to agree with this or if anyone cares, so I'll make it quick. Uh, don't shampoo it except for once every two weeks. You can get it wet. You can wash it. Scrub your hair. Don't shampoo it. Um, uh, don't brush it almost ever. Just let it knot up and be crazy. Maybe kind of comb it out with your hands, but like not a whole, whole lot. And uh, just don't cut it for like a long time. Just let it be insane. And Oh, and sleep with it wet. Like if it looks really bad one day, it's puffy and, and shitty, get your hair wet and just go to sleep. Who wants to go to bed with wet hair? That's awful. Dude, I, that is awful advice. Not, yeah, yeah. No, it's great advice. It's great because you're going to wake up and you're going to all night, you'll be tossing and turning, like pulling your hair all crazy. It's going to get all knotted up and jacked up. And then it's going to look really sick in the morning and you're going to love it. I promise. How do you not have like the shittest yeah. dreadlocks of all, like all, everything you said just suggested? Because I do occasionally, like once every like month or two, like I'll I'll like pull it all apart and shit. Your your regime sounds traumatic. Um, you you want to know, man? I, I'm telling. That's that's, I, that's the not, problem. Not that's why I washed I washed my hair too much and it fell out. Um, right. Oh, that's Zach Helson. This is not good. It's not good advice. It's honest advice. Like you wanted to know. I'm telling okay, you what I do. Okay. It's, it's awful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not advice. It's admission. But yeah. Uh, right, Zach Helsing's got oh, two questions. Are there any plans for more product such as wheels, a team video, or such? Well, you didn't answer me when, when I asked you. So, so was... yes, we're filming sort of a team video in Barcelona. It's really more of a tour thing, but we are going to have dedicated sections with at least half of the crew. I think that counts. We'll call it a half length yet again. Um, and then products, yeah, we talked about that earlier. We have some already working right now. Okay. This is a good and, question. And and a professional product. A pro product. Signature. Name on the thing. If it's not a Heath Burley Pro Wheel, then I, 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 I'm not interested. Zach Helsing. This is, I, I like this one. Has Jumbo visibly changed the status of the Texas Blade scene? So obviously there's been great videos being made for years in Texas, you've had Brian Moore, you've had Ant making loads. God, he's got to have made more than 10 videos by now. Um, you've had Christian, is it Christian Payne? Is that his name? Good memory. Yeah. Um, making videos as well. Like, And Texas has produced so many good scares. But I also feel like Texas doesn't get the kind of recognition that it deserves. Like, you don't see no one currently skating from texas has like ever been on jump street that i know of yeah no one yeah yeah no one. only person from texas was micah and micah hasn't skated in years or like just appearing in like end of year awards things that like you referenced or like i just don't feel like even like when candy came out obviously people loved that because it was in the middle of the pandemic people wanted content and you guys just so happened to drop an amazing video and ends as well but i still don't feel like it 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 was getting as much recognition i feel like i feel like jumbo has brought brought more recognition to this as well especially like the austin and dallas scene what, what i think, think i have multiple things to say about that one as for what it is people think about what jumbo has done that's a for them to decide, and I don't have an opinion because I'm in it, and I can't see outside of it. So even if I tried, I, I wouldn't know. Um, two, as for us not having... The, you're right. 
um, we haven't had a lot of expo like what's the word for that? Like, I don't of think we have coverage? a hub. No, we don't have a hub. Like, you could say them skates. That's a brand. That's their their thing, and they have a name and a product and a vibe, and that's California, right? You could say the same for like, you know, New York City. They they've always had like a brand and a vibe associated with it, and it, you know, whatever that was, whatever era that was, they always had like a company, a presentation, a logo, like whatever it was. It was something that defined it. That made it's amazing what a logo will do to make something feel like quote unquote real, you know, just that alone. And uh, maybe that maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's it, as goofy as that is, man. Maybe that's where that's coming from. Uh, all uh, whether it's East Coast or West Coast in just the states. I'm not even talking about all over the rest of the world, but just in our little hub. I live in the states so i think about it in that that train of thought right that's why maybe it's been overlooked for so long because what's here it's just a bunch of dudes that skate like that's it it's just just the talent portion the rest of it didn't exist oh i guess we had sick urethane how did i forget about that like yeah we had sick but sick didn't focus on texas only sick was all over the place so that wasn't you know that was that was reaching outside um maybe that's why I, I don't i don't know though it's hard it's hard to ask me cuz like i said i'm in i'm in the eye of the storm man I, i'm not really seeing it like that also cool name to that guy helsing that's a exactly. sick name yeah that is, that's a, def is definitely that a not real name? definitely not his real name i'm sure helsing i'm sure the second part he's just added on yeah cool sure, though I'm sure that's true <laughs> Um, he's Sorry. from London, and you will probably see him at Winter Class. He's almost always at Winter Class, so you'll you'll probably come over and say hello. Um, cool. Also, he skates with Duke Nugan. So if you ever see Billy Martin's stuff on Instagram, you might you might see Zach. He's in there. And he is. He's very good at skating. Um, I've bugged you long enough. It's been like two hours. I think we can wrap it up, and you can actually, you know. I would say get dinner, but then you'd be like, wait a minute, it's like five o'clock and I'm not 60. Yeah. It's like five o'clock. It's like five o'clock there, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're the one that stayed up late, dude. This is so, true. It's almost 11 o'clock here. Yeah, no. And you're I'm, staying late. I left I, early. You stayed late. Like we did it. We made it. You know, well, I am the most consistent um, person covering the Texas scene out of, out of all That's Blade true. Media for, for over a decade. So I feel like I, I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to. And deal with the deal with the time difference. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm like I've inter interviewed so many people from Texas over the years. Yeah, you're our one sole source of external media publication, and thank you for that. So I'm going to get a Lone Star beer tattoo, like right on the right on the bicep. Do, do people even? If I, have, if I have any extra stuff, I'll I'll see if I got anything in the closet. I'll try and bring you something. Bring you a little gift. Do people from Texas even drink that? Is that is that a thing? Drink what? It's, it's called Lone Star Beer. Is that right? Have I made that up? What's the What's the beer brand called? Is it's that called it? Lone Star? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You nailed it, dude. Right. You nailed it. That's um, awesome. Right. I've taken up enough of your time. I'm going to see you in yeah. two weeks. When You'll see me soon clash? for sure. Twenty second. When mm -hmm. is Winter Clash? Twenty first, I think. Yeah. Twenty first to twenty second, something like that. I don't know. We'll figure yeah. it out. Two weeks. One way. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Weird. And then you can give me the actual stories when the camera isn't on because I want I want the juicier stuff. I feel like you didn't My camera's gonna be on. I'm gonna put you on blast. You're gonna know what it's like to have a camera in your face all weekend. Lucky for you, I'm a natural born exhibitionist. Unfortunately, you probably won't be able to put online half the stuff that I say, but like that's that's your decision to make. That's not mine. Um after it comes out of my mouth, it no longer belongs to me. So that's all right. Well, good enough. <laughs> right. Thanks for taking the time to do it. I'll no doubt see you in a couple of weeks. And yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping that you're actually just going to enjoy the Winter Clash experience rather than having to quote unquote work.
too much. I'm here to grind, baby. I'm here to have a bad time and make something. So let's go. (laughs) How how many beers do you think you can have while, while filming? We'll find out. Right. That's, that's, that's the correct answer. I like that response. Right. Right. Gonna let you go. Speak soon. All right. Cool. Good seeing you. Bye. Bye.